I remember my first guitar teacher ever telling me the amp you used was more important for your tone than the guitar. Now, while I'm not 100% sure that's strictly true, I do think they're a massive part of your sound. I mean, I guess amps are like the canvas, and your guitar and pedals are like the paintbrush and paint. I think that this thing right here is pretty much everything I've ever needed in an amp, and it's only about 500 quid. This is the Marshall Origin 50, and in this video, we'll go through exactly why I think it's so awesome, and why I think if you're looking for a new amp, you should get one of these. I've had the pleasure of using this thing for a couple of months now, and I never really even intended on making a video solely on this, but I really do think this is such a good amp and it deserves more attention than it gets. For me, with guitar amps, there's three things that I'm looking for that they need to be able to do. The first is have a great clean sound, but I'm not talking about like the sterile clean sound you get if you just plug your guitar into your audio interface. It needs to be well-rounded, but also also to have that little bit of character that you can kind of only get from an amp or actually from amp sims but we're not going into that but that amp clean sound that nice warm clean sound and secondly it needs to be able to take pedals well because if you've watched any of the other videos on this channel you'll know that I love pedals Probably too much, although is that really a thing? I don't think so. But anyway, I love pedals and I need an amp to be able to take pedals well. And thirdly, I don't want an amp that just does a good clean sound. For me, if I'm gonna spend money on an amp, I want it to be able to break up if you really push it and offer a different distortion that I'm not gonna get through my pedals. Now I know there's like amp in a box type pedals and stuff, which are awesome, but honestly, nothing beats sitting in front of an amp and just cranking it right up. It's something about how those low mids come out of the speakers and almost like rattle into you. It's just awesome. Before we really dive in, I just wanna mention that I'm starting a new monthly newsletter that I'm going to send out by email once a month to start with and it's going to have loads of cool tips and tricks for guitar that I can't really share in the YouTube videos. So it would be awesome if you could subscribe to that, I'll leave a link down in the description. Right, but anyway, let's crack on. So, first and foremost, the Origin pays homage to the Plexi series. I'm sure if you've looked into Marshall a little bit, you'll know what that is. I mean, Jimi Hendrix used one, so that's probably enough, isn't it? Now, I've never owned one of those amps, but as far as I can tell, the Origin 50 really does nail that vintage-y kind of sound. It's a 50-watt beast. I don't think I've ever turned the master up past, like, 10 or 11 o'clock at a gig because it is proper loud and basically the controls that you have on this thing are the on off switch here it doesn't actually have a standby which i think is kind of weird but anyway you've got your low mid and high so although this is 50 watts you can attenuate it i always tend to have it on the mid because the high is a little bit too loud and the low seems to break up a little bit too early for me especially when playing gigs and having it a bit louder but for in your bedroom and stuff, that's probably exactly right for you. Then moving across, we have presence and the master. This presence knob actually doesn't do an awful lot. Moving over to the tone controls now, you obviously have treble, middle and bass like a normal amp. And then you have this tilt dial here, which is essentially like another kind of master treble gain. I mean, what I kind of do is I set these these sort of parameters so I like to have a lot of bass and then I'll basically just play with this tilt knob depending on the guitar I'm using and how bright I want it to be and then of course we've got the gain knob here which obviously allows you to add gain it's only one channel but I really don't mind about that. Before we have a listen to some of the sounds on this thing, I wanna say that obviously mine is the head version. You can get a combo, which I found online for like 529 pounds. So still in that 500 pound ballpark. And basically the combo is a one by 12 with a Celestian G12 speaker in it. So a really good speaker. I'm currently using my new Blackstar cabinet, which is loaded with vintage 30s, but I have played this through the speakers of my old Dr. Z Maz Jr., which has the G12 speakers in it. And it sounds amazing still. So I think basically either way, if you buy the head and you've already got a cab, or if you get the combo, you're gonna get an amazing tone no matter what. 
So first up, as I said, number one on my list of what an amp has to do is have a great clean tone. And this thing really does. Here, I've just played a little picking part. I actually put another guitar doing a little lead line over the top with the exact same tone. And I think this sounds really cool. Like I said, I think it has that character that it's hard to put your finger on what it is. And to be honest, this amp just makes it so easy to find good tones, probably because there's not a lot on it, which can be a really good thing sometimes. But anyway, moving on, how does this handle pedals? Well, I think it actually handles them really well. Now, I didn't want to go overboard and like plug every pedal under the sun in because it's not about that, it's about the amp sound. So I've got a little bit of delay, which I've got on the modulation setting. I've got a bit of reverb from the Strymon and a pedal that I haven't really featured that much because we borrowed it from a friend. It is the Fuzz War by Def by Audio. This thing is awesome. I absolutely love this company and I love A Place to Bury Strangers. So yeah, I mean, this thing's relentless. There's a lot of fuzz, there's a lot of reverb, there's a lot of delay. Let's hear how it sounds. Recently, I made a video on this pedal here. It's the Blackstar Amps 1, and it's basically an amp sim in a pedal, and it's got like cab simulators and stuff. I made a whole video on it where I actually compared it to the Marshall and to a Fender Swin, and I think it really held its own. But one of the things that after making that video, and actually playing live since, and recording and stuff here in the studio, I really do feel that you miss that cranked amp sound. This is how it sounds when you absolutely smash this thing up and really let rip. Bearing in mind, this is on its lower setting and it was blasting my ears. I can't even imagine what it would be like turning it all the way up on top setting. I just want to mention that I picked up this amp for about £300 secondhand, which I think is pretty reasonable for the used market at the moment. But in the studio, I also have my Dr. Z Maz Jr, which is an amazing amp, but that thing's worth about £1,000. And in all honesty, I would take this thing over that any day of the week. I think there's a real law of diminishing returns with guitar stuff, where once you get to that kind of pro level, Anything beyond that is really just going to change the sound of stuff so minimally. But if you're making alternative guitar music and you don't have a ridiculous amount of money to spend, I would definitely look at either getting this or the combo version of the Origin 52. If you've liked this video, please sign up to that newsletter and then watch the video that's going to come up here. And until next time, keep on making noises.